Reverse transcriptase inhibitors are a large class of antiretroviral drugs used to treat HIV. The cycle of HIV replication relies on reverse transcriptase, or RT, which takes an RNA template and creates a complementary double-stranded DNA molecule. This violates the central dogma of molecular biology, stating that gene expression always begins with transcribing DNA into RNA and then translating that into proteins. RT has two components, a DNA polymerase, here highlighted in pink, and a ribonuclease H, in brown. The DNA polymerase first makes a complementary DNA strand using the RNA genomic template and nucleotides from the host cell. The ribonuclease then separates the two strands. The DNA strand can then be used as a template for synthesizing another complementary strand. This viral DNA is later incorporated into the genome by the separate protein integrase. HIV can produce 10 to the 10 viruses per day, and RT is very error-prone. Thus, HIV has a very high mutation rate of 3 times 10 to the negative 5 mutations per base pair each cycle. AZT, also known as zidovudine, was the first U.S. government-approved HIV treatment in 1987. It had the shortest time between discovery of activity and FDA approval in modern history, under 25 months. It antagonistically binds to DNA polymerases, replacing a nucleotide. Once incorporated into DNA, it ends the process of transcription, and thus prevents further copying. The human body can repair this damage more effectively than HIV can, thus giving rise to selectivity. It, however, has several issues. AZT is cytotoxic, and may cause long-term damage to the body. Also, with the high reproductive and mutation rates of HIV, strains of AZT-resistant HIV have arisen. Finally, it is, like many other HIV drugs, very expensive. Doctors often use a cocktail of drugs to block HIV replication at several points, thus reducing the likelihood of acquired resistance. However, there is still a need to develop new drugs and cheaper methods of producing them. One group, led by Maria Guimarães, attempted to use computer modeling to reduce the time and cost of drug production by identifying promising options and eliminating dead ends virtually. They went a step further in trying to identify dual target drugs, potentially doubling the antiviral efficacy. They used quantitative structure activity relationship modeling, or QSAR modeling, which used the structure of a molecule to predict its biological activity. They took three base series of molecules, substituting functional groups to explore 120 different potential compounds. They then made 2D models of each compound, converting each pixel into an element of a binary matrix. They then used MATLAB to analyze these matrices for structural analysis. They were able to identify compound B as a highly promising dual-target drug. It is predicted to act as an RT inhibitor as well as an anti-HIV-1 activity compound. They also identified three groups that strongly drove the inhibitory mechanism, a nonpolar methyl group, a bulky bromine group, and the azido-substituted dideoxypentose group. This may be highly useful in designing new drugs, as chemically similar groups may offer equally potent alternatives. Another group, led by William Birmingham, attempted to lower the cost of producing didanosine, another drug, by engineering a completely novel enzymatic pathway. It utilizes the retrograde evolution hypothesis, which claims that new pathways evolved when natural selection favored mutated enzymes that accepted slightly altered substances in times of scarcity. Once environmental conditions changed again, making the new substrate scarce, natural selection would select for mutations of existing enzymes that produce these new substrates, from more common precursors, and so on. The application of this hypothesis, dubbed bioretrosynthesis, is significantly more efficient than attempting to create a pathway in the forward direction. The group identified the already existing inosine pathway as a starting point. Didanosine is the diol form of inosine, thus the starting substrate would be dideoxyribose instead of ribose. These are chemically similar, and the inosine pathway actually produces a very small amount of didanosine naturally, thus making it an appropriate starting point. The method involves identifying potential mutant enzymes of the wild-type pathway and then using random mutagenesis in the form of saturation mutagenesis, error-prone PCR, and random recombination to generate a wide diversity of enzymes. Using didanosine production as the sole criterion for selection, they optimized each protein in the pathway over several generations. The final design pathway was one step shorter than the inosine pathway, skipping an isomerization by phosphorylating the starting material at the 1 carbon as opposed to the 3 carbon. Dideoxyribose is phosphorylated by ribokinase 
and a set of ATP recycling enzymes that maintain a low and steady ATP level. The phosphorylated product is then converted into didanosine by attaching hypoxanthine via PNP. The final pathway was 9,500 times more selective for dideoxyribose and produced 50 times more didanosine than the original one, suggesting that this is a viable alternative to traditional synthetic chemistry.